Hey everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing the Snyder Cut, or as it's officially called, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Wow, that's a weird thing to say. Hashtag release the Snyder Cut has been a movement for years and years, and it's been something I've been aware of for a long time. It's weird now that it's actually happened and I've finally seen the Snyder Cut. I'm going to be doing a spoiler review, so if you haven't seen it, this is your warning. I will be spoiling the entire movie, scenes, plot details, everything. It's almost impossible to review this movie without comparing it to the original. I'm going to try to talk about the movie itself, but I'm also going to compare it to the original because, of course, this is a director's cut of the original. Okay, let's get started. This is going to be probably my longest review, so be prepared. First, I want to say that I absolutely love this movie. This blew all my expectations right out of the water, and this is coming from someone who is not a Snyder fan at all. I like Man of Steel, and I didn't like Batman vs. Superman, so I wasn't expecting to love this, but I absolutely did. This movie is a million times better than the theatrical cut. It has the same basic plot and storyline, but this movie is so much better. The extended runtime really benefited this movie because there was more time to develop all of the characters. In the theatrical cut, all the character development was cut out, so when the Justice League formed, it felt forced and unnatural. In this movie, you get to spend time with each character and really get to know them. When they unite, it's much more natural and logical. That's actually Zack Snyder has been better at making movies when they're longer runtimes. His movies tend to always have better director's cut than the theatrical, and that's kind of a strength and a weakness. A weakness because you need to be able to make a two and a half hour movie and make it be good, and you shouldn't have to rely on a longer cut to make the movie good but a strength because he's good at telling longer form storytelling with more character development. Also, you could tell this movie had one singular vision and tone. The original was a mishmash of two competing tones. This movie has a clear vision and it is executed very well. All the characters are handled so much better. There's no ridiculous forced humor. If you've listened to other episodes of this podcast, you know how much Chris and I hated Flash in the original. This movie redeems him for me. He's much less annoying, and he actually gets an arc, and something important to do in the final battle. There's one thing from this movie that was cut out of the original, which I didn't love. I understand why this was cut out, because it was shot by Joss Whedon. But I would have loved to see the scene in the original where Batman tells Flash to only save one person. It was a great character moment that would have worked well in this movie. That said, I completely understand the decision not to use that because it was shot by Whedon. Unlike the original version, There's barely any humor in this movie, but there are some great moments. There are a few moments that are not forced and feel completely natural. I think the serious tone of this movie, with a few funny moments, worked perfectly. I also have to mention Cyborg. He is the heart and soul of this movie, and where a lot of the emotion comes from. I don't know why in the world Warner Brothers would cut out all his scenes in the original. He was amazing in this. He is so much more well-developed, and he became a fully formed character. Not only that... But all the characters were much more well-developed if you are comparing them to the original cut. Even Joker was better in this than in Suicide Squad. Also, the Martian Manhunter cameo was cool, but there's one thing about it that bothered me. The scene when Martha Kent is talking to Lois Lane is awesome until it is revealed to be Martian Manhunter. That just seemed shoehorned in and lame. It caused so many plot holes and didn't make much sense. I really wish that was actually Martha Kent and that scene would have been so much better. Other than that, I don't have much to say about it, except that I really like the cameo. I have barely any knowledge about who the character is, so I didn't have the same reaction some people must have had, though. Now, I want to talk about Steppenwolf. In the theatrical cut, he was a joke. He didn't look threatening, and he was a lame CGI villain with no motivation at all. In this, he was actually scary and intimidating. There was real stakes because he actually felt like a threat to the heroes. Not only that, but he had a motivation. At the end of the movie, you sort of feel bad for him that he died. He just wants to be redeemed and go home. He was intimidating in voice and body, but whenever there were close-ups of his face, I kind of laughed. I don't know why, but his face made me laugh because he looked like he had a sad baby face. I wonder if anyone else noticed that. He was like this intimidating monster with the sad baby face. It was so unintentionally funny. Other than that, I really liked him and thought he was pretty intimidating. In the original cut, I despised Steppenwolf. But now, I actually like him as a character. He's still a big CGI monster, which I don't love, but he's a better big CGI monster. Not like that horrible doomsday from BVS. 
I also have to mention Darkseid, of course. There's not much of him to go off of, but from what I've seen, I really liked him. He was intimidating and scary, and a cool villain. That moment when he crushed Steppenwolf's head was a great moment to show his cruelty. He didn't have much of a motivation, but that didn't bother me because he was barely in the movie, and his purpose in the movie was to be an intimidating figure and presence, not to be a fully fleshed out character. I also have to mention the technical side of things before I get into more criticism and scenes I liked. This movie was absolutely stunning. It's no secret that Zack Snyder is a masterful visual storyteller, but this really highlights it. The cinematography, visual effects, and color grading were amazing. The camera angles and cinematography really stood out above the rest. The camera shots were inventive and interesting and made for a beautiful movie. Also, I noticed how much Snyder loves slow-mo. There were so many slow motion scenes, it was kind of funny at points. I really enjoyed a lot of them, but at points it was like, okay, that's enough slow-mo. I think IGN even did a report where they found that 10%, about 27 minutes, I believe, of the entire movie was slow-mo. The CGI was also so much better than the original. I remember cringing so hard at the theatrical cut because the visual effects were horrible. This movie looks much better than that. One thing I noticed was that Snyder's color grading kind of makes the visual effects look better. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, the desaturated color makes it much harder to tell what's green screen and what's not. One of the major problems I had with the Whedon cut was that it looked so obviously fake. That was not the case for this movie. I also think the movie was much better written. All the characters have motivation, and most of them had some sort of arc they went through. Next, I have to mention the pacing. For a four-hour movie, this didn't feel very long. It felt shorter. It was paced very well so that it didn't feel four hours. The built-in chapter breaks also created perfect spots to pause and take a break. One thing you could tell is that there's definitely a better three-hour to three-and-a-half-hour movie in there. A lot of the scenes could have been cut out to make it a more streamlined movie. And if this was going to theaters, it would be much shorter. There were plenty of scenes that could and would have been removed if this were going to theaters. This could make an amazing three-hour movie, but I'm happy with it the way it is. For Snyder, he might as well add everything he wants to add. This is his version of the movie without studio notes. Everyone will see it regardless of runtime, and he doesn't have to worry about cutting it down since it's not having a traditional theatrical run. Sure, there was a bunch of unnecessary scenes, but that was the point and I'm fine with it. I'm going to mention some more minor criticisms I had before getting into the scenes I loved, and more specific things I enjoyed. Some of these are super nitpicky and tiny things that bothered me. First of all, I thought most of the acting was good. There was one moment that I cringed at. When Superman is fighting the Justice League and Diana goes, Kal-El, no, the line delivery here was so cringy and bad. Also, some of the choices of the soundtrack I love and some really took me out of it. The songs that played in the background during some scenes were just so on the nose that it bothered me. They seemed so out of place and weird. One example of that is when Flash is saving Iris West. The entire scene was weird for me. I liked Flash saving Iris, but he was also kind of creepy. Also, the humor in that scene didn't work for me. My enjoyment of that scene was also lessened by the weird song choice. Also, the scene when Batman first meets Aquaman and Aquaman swims away There's a group of people that start singing. I didn't mind them singing, but it was weird that we spent like a whole minute and a half just there listening to them singing. It was weird and out of place. Finally, there were way too many slow-mo scenes. There were so many unnecessary ones that it was funny. Although the soundtrack bothered me at points, I did love the score. I thought it was very good for the movie. Also, the new version of the Wonder Woman theme played like 30 times throughout the movie, and it's more obnoxious and kind of funny, but I loved it so much for some reason. That theme, even all the different versions of it, are super catchy. So it was it was great to hear, even if it did play like 75 times throughout the movie. Also, the ending of the movie reminded me of the ending of Return of the King in that there are multiple endings. You feel like this should be the last scene, but there's another one. And then when you feel like that's the last scene, there's another one. Some of these scenes felt like they would be post credit scenes, but they weren't. And that's neither a good thing or a bad thing, just an observation. Now, I want to get into other scenes and sequences I liked. First of all, all of the fight scenes were much better. They were well choreographed and shot. I thought the theatrical fight scenes were okay, but these ones were much better. The final battle and the sequence on Themyscira, when Steppenwolf stole the mother box, really stood out to me the most. Both scenes were extended from the theatrical and were super well done. Steppenwolf was scary and the scenes were tense and stressful in the best way. Also, the scene when Diana stopped the bad guys with the bomb near the beginning was awesome. 
I also love the flashback scene when we saw all the armies of Earth versus Darkseid. That was such a cool battle and was very exciting to watch. It reminded me again of Lord of the Rings because of the epic scale. Also, the ending when Darkseid showed up was awesome. You really felt the tension of the moment, and, and I was absolutely shocked when he disintegrated and killed the Justice League. Seeing Flash then turn back time and seeing everybody reform was awesome. It was such an unexpected and cool moment. Also, I just wanted to mention how much I love the black suit on Superman. It looked awesome. There were plenty of things like that that weren't given enough context or didn't make full sense, but that just worked because they were cool. This movie has plenty of plot holes and plenty of logical issues, but it's still very fun to watch. Finally, I want to mention the nightmare sequence. I absolutely loved it. I am dying to see the story that Snyder had planned out with Flash going back in time to warn Batman and the whole Injustice storyline and all of that. There were problems with the scene, though. In the context of the movie, it did not work. It was a bad scene. It was shoehorned in and should have been cut out. This sequence is objectively bad. It felt tacked on and jarring after what would have been the ending and what should have been the ending. It made no sense if you haven't been following Snyder's interviews and what he's been saying. The scene was bad in the context of the movie, but that said, it was kind of fan service and I love seeing it because it gave me a taste of what Snyder's plan was. The critic part of me knows that scene is bad and knows how weird it is in the context of the movie, but the fan part of me just loved it and thought it was awesome. Also, I, I wanted to point out how weird Amber Heard was in the movie. It really stuck out to me. Her acting was not good, and she was doing this horrible fake accent. Also, the nightmare scene made me sad because it was so cool, and I know we'll never get to see any more of it and what Snyder had planned. I'm dying to see the rest of Snyder's vision. Before this movie, I couldn't care less about Restore the Snyderverse. Now, I want to see that happen. Although it never will happen, I would love to see more Zack Snyder Justice League movies. I'm still in shock that some Warner Brothers executive saw a cut of this movie, and of course it would be an unfinished cut without finished visual effects, but saw any cut of this movie and said, this sucks, let's get Joss Whedon to make it more funny like the Avengers movies. It's crazy. Overall, was this a great movie? No, probably not. Was this a good movie? Yes, it was. Was this a movie I absolutely loved? Totally. I love this movie, even though there were flaws, and I would give it a 10 out of 10. There's something to be said for the idea yeah, that maybe I love this movie so much because I was comparing it to the original, but I don't think that's the case. I think this is just a good movie and an enjoyable movie with or without the original to compare it to. That's all I want to say on Justice League for now, but I'm sure there'll be more I'll think of later. That's why I have a special announcement. Chris and I will be doing a listener commission podcast episode soon. That means we'll spend a whole episode talking about whatever you guys want. I have a form that I'd like everyone who wants to fill out with topics. It could be about anything. Falcon Winter Soldier, movie news, favorite movies, Snyder Cut, WandaVision, Spider-Man 3, anything at all. Fill out the form with a topic or a question and we'll respond to it and discuss it in the episode. We're going to need a lot of stuff to talk about, so please fill out the form as many times as possible. Come back and fill it out whenever you want. We don't have a date yet set to record. So there's time to submit lots of questions and topics and things you want to hear us talk about. Also, please vote if you haven't already on our WandaVision Awards show. The link for that is in the description. That said, thank you for listening. Let us know what you think by sending feedback. All the ways you can do that are linked in the description below. And please make sure to fill out the topic form as many times as you can and vote on the WandaVision Awards. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.